For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation, going to heaven, is on the merit of the finished work of Jesus Christ called the gospel, where Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You are not okay when it comes to religion. You have no safe ground when you say atheism. And there is no hope in believing in a creation by nothing of evolution. The fact is that we are created by a God, created by the God, that made all things, Genesis chapter 1, and made man. And the fact is that man has violated what God has said as all men will do. And that his love in his creation, he sent his only begotten son that we may have hope, the blessed hope, Titus 2.13. Now, if we can get to heaven on whatever man thinks we can get to heaven, or whether man thinks there is no heaven, then the question lies, why was there Jesus Christ? Why was there the love of God that he sent his only begotten son? When God himself who created us and looked upon us and said they have sinned, and God saying, be ye holy, for I am holy, and we cannot meet that because we fall short. For the Bible says, all have sinned, all have come to show the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one, so we cannot get to God. And when we cannot get to God, God said, for I so love that creation of mine, that I will give my only begotten son that they may have hope. And that hope is not in a pope. That hope is not in religion. That hope is not in Allah. That hope is in a God of Israel, the God that brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, Jehovah. That of the Lord Jesus Christ that is God, and God is Jesus Christ. He's not a God that you're to eat. He is not a God that you multiply children. He is a God that is God, above all gods. And that God, creator God of mankind, says you cannot do, not of works, least any man boasts. God that says when, oh, I'm okay, I'm good, there is none that doeth good. God, through his holy scriptures, has written to us that without Jesus Christ, you have no hope. You will get the wrath of God because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be cast off into eternity, the lake of fire that burneth forever, the second death, because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have believed or disbelieved anything else. And that Jesus said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. That is the God that created you. That is the God that loved you. That is the God that suffered and died for you. That is the God that came, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And no other. I'm here to tell you the love of God is about Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. 
the love of God is that you may attain eternal life. For God is long suffering, He's not willing that any should perish. God does not enjoy casting man off into hell. God is not pleased with the wicked. He's angry with the wicked every day. Psalms 11, 7, 11. And yet by His holiness and His righteousness, you cannot enter into His abode such as the sinner you are. You cannot step up to God being unrighteous. You must step up to God in righteousness, and the Bible says we have no righteousness. We must come to the accountability of Jesus Christ the righteous. Jesus Christ the sinless perfection. Jesus Christ the Lamb that took away the sin of the world for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him. To go to heaven. To get right with God is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. There is no other means. And the Bible speaks about. And we're going to, to the Bible as we always do, the Bible. We're not looking at what man has written. We're looking at what God has written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But our God's in the heavens. Well, how do I know, sir, that your religion is better than my religion? My God's in the heavens. Your God is on the earth. Isaiah 14. And your God has been cast down to the earth. Revelation 12. By the God of the Bible that's in the heavens. You see, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God Jesus Christ, has cast down your God onto the planet Earth and said, you can only come up here when I allow it. And Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says that there will be coming a time when God says to Satan, absolutely no more can you come here. That's your God. If your God is not Jesus Christ. The God of salvation is seated in heaven at this moment, according to Psalms 15. Jesus Christ is at the place of the right hand of God today in the heaven. For the Bible says three days and three nights he arose from the grave according to the scriptures. And the testimony of over 450 people that saw the resurrected Christ is a testimony of the finished work of God, Jesus Christ. The third part of the gospel. So your God has to be seated in the heavens. And that is no Pope. That is no other gods of this planet Earth. Their Allah is not seated in the heavens. Multi-Godism is not in the heavens. But our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever He pleased. Now when I have a God and the Bible says that my God does whatever He pleases, He does everything always 100% righteous and clean. He's not the God 
God of the Romans. He's not the God of the Greeks where they were cohabitate with the, the human beings. They would battle each other. They would have drinking fest. They would drive their cars left and drive their cars left. No, the God of the Bible that sits in the heavens that says, I love you, I am going to give you my only begotten Son, the Lamb of God, that God, whatever He does, He does, and He does it in righteousness, and He does it in holiness, and it's always correct, and it's never sin. 33 and a half years, Jesus Christ, and the Roman government could not, could not find one fault with him. Your God has to sit in the heavens, and your God has to do everything righteously and holy to be a saving God. Your God has to be the master of all gods. The God that will save you has to love you. Despite the fact who you are. I am a saved, born again, Bible believing Christian, yet I'm still a sinner and the love of God is still upon me. And he says, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee if you believe on my son. If you're to believe on my son, I will adopt you into my family and take you out from Satan, the Father. John 8, 44. And you must say, well, in my church, God is in heaven. Well, I ask you to ask your pastor, your pastorette, your priest, your rabbi, Whoever is the instructional leader of where you attend, of a surety that the God that is preached, is he a God that is in heaven, that is always and correctly right in everything that he does, and that he loves you enough that he will give his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, that, that God will say, I am the way, I am the truth, there is no other way to the Father but by me, minus the statues, minus the offerings, minus the attendance. It is only in Jesus Christ will your church say that today. Will your preacher tell you it is only by the shed blood of God and God alone that you may be saved? Minus anything else. A God that is in heaven. A righteous God. Verse 4. Psalms 115. Come on, someone's got to have a Bible here. It's the most bought book. It is the book that is found in more homes. It is the book that is when the Chinese people get it, they bow down before it, and they shed tears over the Bible. It is the Bible that nations have said, get rid of it, and the people say, we want it. And you're found absent from the Bible. The Bible, the Word of God, Jesus says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Mother earth and all the whales and all the animals are going to go away, but the word of God will abound forever. And you're not carrying a copy of it? Shame on you. Come on, don't you people know every Saturday morning you're going to have a, a service here with preaching and you don't bring your Bible? Come on, what kind of congregation are you? Get yourself a Bible, the Bible says, search out the words, and know for the fact is that what God says will happen. Seek ye out the word of God. Right here is the words of life. It ought to be open, it ought to be read. It ought to be honored. 
Because the word the Bible says is Jesus Christ. This is the way, this is the instruction of mankind. You're not going to know God unless you open up these pages and study. Their idols are silver and gold. The works of man's hands. I'm not a Bible corrector, but I can... Copper, zinc, aluminum can add to the gods of America. And many people think, well, I will approach the God with cash. I will break out my debit credit card to God and he'll swipe it. And that's not going to happen. You see, to get to heaven, God don't take cash. To enter in the pearly gates is not by a debit card. To access God and His throne is by only one payment, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, the blood of God. Acts 20:28. 20, you see, salvation today is wrought by the finished work of Jesus Christ that suffered and died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That that blood that was spilled upon Calvary was God's blood. Acts 20:28. 20, and when God's blood was spilled upon Calvary, it was holy, sinless, perfected blood. It is blood that had no other blood to be found in mankind. It's God's blood. It's not intoxicating blood. It's not an artificial blood. The only preservative is, it's God's blood. Now churches and religion add things to that blood. But there's nothing to be added to the blood. Let me read you Acts 20:28. 20, I would hate to have you think that I'm just talking, talking. Acts 20:28. 20, Acts 20:28. 20, To feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. If your church does not have the blood of Jesus Christ, it's anemic. And you will die and go to hell without the blood of Jesus Christ. You say, we baptize. You just got wet. You didn't get saved. You say, we eat Jesus. You got full. You didn't get saved. Oh, we pray to the east, we pray to the west, we pray to the north. All you do is open your big fat mouth. You did not get salvation. Salvation comes by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. God's blood, Acts 20, 28. Gold and silver do not carry blood. It will not be accepted on the day of reckoning. You may approach God and say, God, here is my tax records. See line number such and such for contribution. God says, I don't care. I want to see the blood of Jesus Christ. No blood, no salvation. It's like you go into a restaurant, the sign says, no shirt, no shoes, no service. When you get to heaven, no blood, no entrance. Even though you got the shoes and the shirt, no blood, no entrance before God. Forever. It's only by the blood. Not silver and not gold. Only by the blood. Two 
Josh cannot buy your hope with God. I don't think there's any ATMs in heaven. God did not make plastic, by the way, so your credit card's not going to work. Plastic is man-made. God gave us gold, silver, zinc, magnesium, and all the elements. There's no element called plastic. God don't take credit or cash. They have mouths, but they speak not. And eyes have they, but they see not. Let's see here. Hey, you got I got a U.S. dollar bill right here. And old Georgie has eyes. George, you see me? Hi, George. Georgie's got a mouth. Speak to me, George. Oh, you can buy grapes. You can buy watermelons. You can buy plants. You can buy alcohol. But you cannot buy salvation with money. And definitely American money. This dollar bill is not worth a dollar bill, according to the economy. And yet he has eyes, and he has a mouth, and he don't speak. He has facial features. And yet he cannot get you to heaven. And I'm not even sure if Georgie Wargy is in heaven. I don't know. But there are some people that put their faith and they put their love and they put their life in a piece of paper that have heads on it. And do you ever realize that your money is beheaded heads? They have no body. It's just a head. Almost like the Islam religion, just the head. And this is not going to protect you when you get to heaven. This is not going to be with you when you die. They may throw all your money into your coffin. That's where it'll stay until grave diggers come and get it from your coffin like they've done with the Egyptians. Hey, God, here's a dollar bill. Can I get into heaven? <laughs> This can't match with the blood of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine where this dollar bill is gone? I don't know. This bill is 2009. Can you imagine all the things that this dollar bill has bought? Probably bought tobacco. Probably bought alcohol. They maybe bought sex. They maybe bought drugs. And you're going to take the filthy stuff that this stuff bought and you're going to give it to the Holy God and say, God, take this? Not with the filthiness this has been. What kind of hands have touched this money? Hands that are sinners for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you're going to hand this to the Holy God and say, God, this is my way into heaven. Georgie Wargy is the only president that's on green money that shows up in churches. Thomas Jefferson shows up in Walmart. Benjamin Franklin rarely makes it into the church. And you think those are going to buy your way into heaven. Think about where the filth of that money has lied and what has bought. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The faces on your money has eyes and mouths, yet they can't see, they can't talk. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet they have, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. Well... Your money don't have hands. And your money don't have feet. But there are churches out there 
who have things in the churches and they got hands spread out hands holding baby hands picking their nose whatever those things do with their hands but those hands can't move the Bible calls them idols and imagery images and the Bible calls it sin how do you know preacher that my idol my image is not like Jesus because the Bible says about my Jesus that's able to save your soul he took his hands and laid them upon the lepers he took his hands and broke the bread he walked upon the water Let's see you do that with your Buddha statue. Bring your Buddha statue over here to the river and let's see what it does with that river. It'll sink like you will sink into the lake of fire that burneth forever. Come on, Buddha, lose some weight. You ain't got nothing to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was living. Jesus Christ is breathing. Jesus Christ is alive and well at the right hand of the Father. Statues are not. You got failures or idols. St. Christopher, you see the patron saint of automobiles until they found him in the junkyard. And then he lost his title. My Jesus Christ will never leave his title and his title of King of Kings and Lord of Lords and God of Jehovah will never, ever be taken away from him. And the salvation that he wrought will never and ever be taken away from you. As sure as Jesus Christ is God, is as sure that you cannot lose what you take from God. The eternal hope. The sacrifice of that Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world cannot be taken away from you when you come to believe. I believe Paul calls them dumb idols. If Paul calls them dumb, what do you think God calls them? I know what he calls them. Abomination. That's a big word. That means God's not pleased. Age to worship. Abomination. You see, to go to God, to go to heaven, you've got to come by Jesus Christ. There's only one door. And Jesus Christ says, I am the door. Anybody who crawls over, he says, is a thief. And I don't think God's going to allow thieves into his heaven. I don't think so. I'm for sure that thieves are not going to be there. But only those that put their faith and trust upon what Jesus has done. You see, everything else has no movement. You know what the Bible says about Jesus right now? It says, for his people that have believed on him, He's making an intercession to God the Father. That means he is not seated dumb on the throne with the Father. He's speaking to the Father about us. The Bible says he is praying for us. You can't do that if you're a statue. Jesus Christ is living and breathing. And the Bible records about him. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. 
Now you may put the elf on the shelf, but he can't see. But Jesus Christ can see. Jesus Christ, who is God, knows what's going on. You better not pout, you better not shout, I'll tell you why, because Jesus is watching. God knew full well what was going on in Sodom. God knew full well what was going on in Nineveh. God knew full well what was going on in Capernaum. And don't think that God does not see what happens on American soil. And don't think that God's going to bless America in her sins. You cannot be blessed by God when you tell God to get out of your schools. And you cannot be blessed by God if you will not receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. And the moment that you hear that Jesus saves, you are now accountable because you have heard the words of life. You are without excuse. It cannot be ignored no longer. You see, when we preach weekly and you hear that Jesus Christ is the way the truth and the life you have heard the way of God and you can never tell God I don't know I never knew we give you no longer excuse to say God I never knew And is Jesus Christ the only way that will get you to heaven? Jesus Christ is the truth that gets you to heaven. And the only life you will get in eternity is by Jesus Christ. Because there is no access to God except by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no freedom until you have been freed from your sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. If you trust not in Jesus Christ. You will not get independence. You will not get freedom. And there will be fire without the cracker. And you may hope there's alcohol in hell, but there isn't. There is no H2O in hell to relieve you. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Saved from hell. H-E-L-L. -L. Your friend may tell you to go to hell, but we teach you how not to go to hell. Surely goodness and mercy comes by Jesus Christ. Baptists cannot be found in heaven. Along with Catholics and Lutherans and scientists and The only ones found in heaven are those who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. How 
Have you been to the Crimson Tide? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Or are you trusting in something that God will not approve of? God does not approve of religion. Religion is man-made, authored by Satan. You say, what's the difference? Jesus Christ, God. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Religion makes you look good, but not to God. Religion's like makeup. You plaster it all over your face. You change who you are. But the day when you stand before God, that junk comes off your face and you relieve who you are. And it will not save you. Who you are. What you are. What will save you is what Jesus Christ has done, not what you have done. Listen, that makeup is deceiving. I read this week that in Germany a man was able to sue his wife because the first day he seen her after he married her, she took off her makeup. It was deceiving who she was. And that makeup of religion is deceiving. And the offer of deceivement is Satan. You may paint whatever you want to paint on, but that's not approved by God. Because God wants pureness. God wants holiness. God wants righteousness. And God said that's through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no acceptance except when you believe on Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There is no entrance into heaven outside of Jesus Christ. You are not okay. You are not going to rest in peace if you die without Jesus Christ. There is no security unless you have the secureness of God. So God loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The wages of sin is death. That is your part. You are going to fulfill your part. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's God's part. You will die. And by Jesus Christ, God will preserve you. Without Jesus Christ, the Bible says it is the wrath of God. That is hell. You think it's hot right now in Ohio? You think it's hot in Florida right now? Wait till you enter into the flames of hell forever. There is no AC. There is no ice. There is no water. There is torments and damnation because you will choose to reject Jesus Christ. And you don't have to. Oh, you will go there without Jesus Christ. That's a surety by the word of God, ma'am. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You will go to hell without Jesus. You have no choice. 
You have no option except by Jesus Christ. Reject Jesus and you will go to hell. With a preacher preaching and telling you how not to. Plain and simple. It's not something to laugh at, folks. It's seriousness. That's why God said, go in all the world and preach the gospel. Because to God it's serious. How serious? He sent His Son to die. Isn't that serious enough? Isn't it serious enough that God left heaven that He might save your pitiful soul? And the foreknowledge of God is that He suffered and died knowing how you would react in 2018 in Daytona Beach, Florida, USA. He already knew if you reject. He would know that you would scorn. He knows if you would get right or if you would not get right. It's got to be so important that God says get out there every week and do it. You know the love of God that we love you guys enough that we are here with the gospel. That all we do is preach the gospel. And the gospel is that Jesus says by his testimony that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's always been that simple. And it's sorry yet the Bible says the Bible says many of you will not. Many of you we will see at the great white throne judgment and be cast off in a lake of fire that burneth forever. Many of you will reject Jesus Christ as their Savior. But the Bible says few. Few will go into that straight gate. For broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And straight is the way that leadeth to life. We don't come here every week to seek everybody to get right. But if that one person will come out, if that one person will say, you know what, I'm saved. I'm going to step out and do something for the Lord now. He loses. The very first state. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? From a place that's not preached in churches in 2018. H-E-L-L, -L, hell. Take account last time your church mentioned hell. Just take account. I bet you'd be shocked. 80s don't count. 
Now, why is it that you will get up feathered? You will get upset that you got to press one for English, but you buy into the Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> press your pastor to speak the King James English language. We don't speak Greek, we don't speak Hebrew. It's called hell. Tell your preacher you heard about hell. And if he cringes. <laughs> I was going to say something bad, but I won't. <laughs> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. 